Well, good morning. Good morning, uh, Epiphany family. Uh, this is uh, perhaps one of the hardest, hardest Sundays that we've um, ever had to, to gather. And um, we are, um, we're not going to, to pretend or um, put on a, a false, a false sense of hope. We're going to rest in a honest sense of hope, an accurate sense of hope, um, and uh, worship the Lord today through through lament, through prayer, through worship, through uh, for, for through praise and song. Um, and it's hard, right? Because uh, we've been in a in a in a tough, tough, tough time these last these last several several days. It's hard to begin to uh, express feelings, express emotions. Um, I, uh, a term that I've come to rest in today is that we are in or I am in um, uh, an ecosystem of emotions. Um, in the same way an ecosystem all works together, uh, there's emotions that, that are just swirling around uh, that uh, we are hoping and trusting and believing that uh, all of those emotions are, are working still together to point us to to the Lord Jesus, even in the midst of stuff. And so, so today we're going to have a, a, a worship service of, of lament. And this is not um, unfamiliar to us. We've had services of lament before as well. For those of you who haven't um, experienced anything like this with us, um, uh, lament is something that is required. It's, it's, it's instructed by God that we we cry out to Him. Lament is is a as a passionate uh, expression of our grief, of our sorrow, um, and and the Lord invites us into that into that work, into that experience. He doesn't want us to run away from it, to 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 put a cap on it. No, in fact, He He welcomes it. Um, one because he already knows it he knows he knows how we feel um and he says you can trust me you can bring those things to me um, i am more than able to handle them and and give you what you need and so um so that's that will be our our time today you'll have a chance to we'll do some some call and response um i'll lead us through some readings in the scriptures and um, we'll do again some some call to response we'll have some time for prayer and um, worship as well through music and um, and we'll give you some some uh, announcements about um, how to stay connected in the community and and stay stay involved so uh, listen there's a lot of um, uh, I talked about this this ecosystem of emotion. There's a lot of of um, anger, um, anger that that started out with the absolute senseless and tragic death of George Floyd. Um, anger that another unarmed black man died at the hands of the police. Um, senseless, unnecessary, um, careless act, and that anger is um, is 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 pent up over over time. This is not an isolated event. We know this. This is something that we know. We're all very familiar with this. There's sadness as well. Um, mixed with that anger. And the sadness uh, is not just about the, the death, but it's the sadness and the anger and the despair 
of, of, of systems that need complete and total overhaul. Systems that historically do not value the lives of, of non-white individuals and in, especially in the inner city. And again, this is stuff that we know to be true. <clears throat> These are other God imagers as well that are being taken out often for nonviolent offenses. There's despair in that. There's anger in that. There's frustration in that. Um, to know that simply because the, the color of your skin, you, you can have an encounter with a police officer that could end in your death. So there's sadness in that. There's sadness and anger in, in uh, watching a community uh, literally burn to the ground. For those of us who especially live right here in South Minneapolis and those who live over north as well that experienced um, some of this, a lot of this. Um, what, we, what we saw was, was, was protest, but then we also saw violence and anarchy that was not protest. Um, we saw clearly agitators. Um, we saw white nationalists. We saw uh, KKK organizers. We, we saw people um, that were intentionally trying to harm, intentionally agitating, intentionally smashing windows and buildings, intentionally, uh, th these, these are eyewitness things that, that, we, that we saw. And, um, and those things cause even more anger, more hurt, more distrust. And so in times like this, it can be very difficult and very difficult to try to muster up hope to try to muster up uh, courage. Um, you know, uh, many of us had to, to get our kids out of here and uh, get them into a safe place um, and, and try, to, try to organize and be at home with neighbors and um, ensuring that, um, uh, that people are, are safe and that property is safe. And, and these are things that we, we shouldn't have to do. We shouldn't have to have to do that. Um, uh, but then events happen and you find yourself in situations where um, you're asked to, to do something that maybe you never thought you'd, you'd be asked to do. I don't think any of us living here ever thought that we'd have to be finding uh, escape routes and getting our kids into safe places. And so even in the midst of that, right, it creates also for us, hopefully, a level of empathy for people who live in war-torn countries that are fleeing constant violence, constant destruction. They go to sleep with with bombs blowing, the exploding over over there. They're fleeing from from cartels or or things like that. I, this the, the, it should create in us a, a level of empathy as well that uh, that we ought to, to we ought to act differently to to the stranger to the to the to the what we would call the stranger, what we would call the the foreigner, what we would call those people who are who are seeking uh, a different life, safety. It it should create in us something different. And we know we've got to deal with the real systematic and systemic issues of racism here in our country. That's real. And we also have to be mindful of the pain and suffering that sin causes throughout the world. And even as we have entered into this, this sermon series on kingdom, uh, I don't think any of us, I certainly didn't think that part of, part of that sermon uh, would, 
would have this real tangible um, uh, example of, of the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdoms of this world, the kingdom of the enemy. And so, so this is a time for us to express this, to, to get it out. And certainly, listen, in a virtual service, we're not going to be able to fully do that. Um, that's just not possible. We're still in the midst of a health pandemic. We still got to practice, uh, you know, health, you know, health restrictions and distancing and things like that. And we want you to, to do that. And so let's not think that this time is going to be it. But our hope and prayer is that this time will give us some sense of communal lament, some sense of communal worship to the Lord, some sense of, of communal mourning and grief, and, and it's okay for that, but then also a communal sense of hope, of true hope. Um, the school where I work at Hope Academy, we're, <laughs> we're in the midst of trying to create a campaign, a campaign that says, let hope arise. And I don't know if there's a, a, a more appropriate time uh, now than to believe and to champion something that says, let hope arise. And so we want to be able to do that, to, to allow the hope of God, which does not disappoint, to arise in us and so that's our that's our goal for today we're going to leave the chat on for you so you can um you know send messages to the the chat moderator um you can still we'd love for you to still um check in and let us know if you're here remember if you're checking in um, all you have to do is the, just uh, name the adults that are with you and then just the number of children that are with you. Um, so you can name the adults and the number of children. That really helps us to, to be able to capture and say, like, who's, who's here, who's worshiping with us. And, um, and we want to make sure that there's also, uh, it's hopefully the, the last step of security. Uh, we're trying to do everything we can to make sure that this is a safe uh, space. And so if you're new with us today, um, thank you for, for joining us. Um, and make sure uh, if this was your first time, you may, you may have gotten a message from us asking to, in the waiting room, asking for to identify yourself. And if we don't hear back from you, just know that you'll be removed because we want to make sure that we can identify every person. We may ask you um, something like, how did you find out about Epiphany? We want to know where you're connected at. So uh, again, what we're trying to do is to create as much as a safe environment as possible where nobody is, is bringing harm or evil into, into our time. So I'm going to read a couple of passages. We're going to have some call and response. I'm going to walk us through this. We'll watch some, some, some video, um, et cetera. And, um, and, and we're just gonna we're just gonna trust that the Lord is is going to be honored through this time, and that through us expressing our our uh, our pain and sorrow and hope in Him, that we will actually um, come out uh, feeling a little bit lighter, uh, a little bit more refreshed because of that. So why don't you join with me in prayer now? Father God, we thank you so much for this time. We thank you for this day. Um, and it is hard. It is so hard to, to try to muster up um, gratitude when for the last, the last uh, 72 hours, um, what we've seen around us um, on our streets um, is destruction just complete destruction, complete looting and burning down of buildings. And we've seen the destruction of, of human life, God, and a life taken away completely unnecessarily. It, it, it's in the midst of all that, in the midst of that, that destruction of, of life and property, it, it, it is so hard, God, so very hard to try to find encouragement in you. 
And we're just going to be honest with that, God. We're not going to pretend it like that doesn't exist. We're not going to pretend like that's not a thing. No, we're going to be real and honest with you because we know that you already know how we feel. So there's no reason for us to put to put a front on. No reason for us to act like these feelings aren't real. For some of us, God, in our community, uh, they don't know what to do. Some people want to help, but they feel frozen. They don't know what to do. And, and God, we ask that you would give them mercy and grace as well. Encourage their hearts um, as well. For some of us, God, there's a real sense of, of, of vengeance, a real sense of wanting to get back, a real sense of wanting to take up arms and do something. God, that, that's, that's real for a lot of folks, God. And we pray that that even in the midst of this pain, even in the midst of this, this destruction and sorrow, that, that we would follow your word and you tell us to, to leave room for your vengeance, that vengeance belongs to you and that our call is to love, to love, to love fiercely, to love deeply. That's our call. And, and, and it's hard, it's difficult, but we pray that you would encourage our hearts to do that work. So God, as we enter into this time of worship, as we read your word, as we sing songs, as we reflect in silence, uh, help us to be mindful um, that you, you God, um, have never left us, have never forsaken us, that you have always, always been, been there. So we appreciate you, God. We love you. We thank you. We pray this now and offer this time up to you in the matchless name of your son, Jesus, who is the Christ. And we all said together, amen. So I'm going to read a, a text for us um, and then there'll be um, a congregational response. And so you'll see the text and the response on the screen. Um, I'll give us a time to actually share that response. Uh, you can, we're going to keep everybody muted, but uh, what we'd like you to do is to, is to say that response out loud where you are in your home. It's a, it's a short passage and you can read that out loud. Um, and we encourage you to really read it out loud, to, to let the words come out of your mouth and not just stay in your head, just vocalizing it, um, you know, does something to, to, to move things around in the airways and come out your mouth. And I think there's some breakthrough that happens physically with us, even as we, as we talk out loud the word of the Lord. And so, um, so we encourage you to, to do that um, as well. All right, so this first, this first passage is from the book of Nehemiah. And uh, just before you see it, it'll be on the screen, but before you see it, um, as a reminder, Nehemiah, uh, was he lived during the time of one of, one of the last uh, the last portions of the Old Testament? Um, it was a time of exile that the people were in, and Nehemiah was serving as as cupbearer um, to the king. And um, when the book opens, he's a contemporary with Ezra, uh, and Ezra had the call, the responsibility um, as a prophet as um, a, a workman to the Lord. He had the responsibility to help rebuild the city of Jerusalem. Um, but while the city was still, uh, uh, you know, in ruins at the time, Nehemiah was, was called to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And so Nehemiah comes uh, to us in this setting where he's in captivity, he's in exile, he gets this report um, that the, the city gates and the walls are left in ruins. And, um, and one of the things that we'll see here is Nehemiah's plea to the Lord, his, his call to the Lord. Um, in, a, in, in a similar way, we can feel um, the weight of, of our city um, in ruins, land uh, from destruction of fire and, and vandalism. Uh, and so we can take a, an example from from Nehemiah the prophet and how he responded. And so Nehemiah chapter one, uh, and here's, here's what it says. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakali, 
in the month of Kislev in the 20th year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hananiah, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men. And I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile are back in the province, are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly toward you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, the laws you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if you are exiled, people are at the farthest horizon. I will gather them and from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was cupbearer to the king. This is the prayer of Nehemiah. The confession, the sins of his family and the sins of all the people. We make the same confession today. So the response that we'll have you share together is found in Psalm 62, Verse five, verses five through seven. And you can read this um, together out loud on your own. Amen. And now we will take a look at um, and participate, not just look at, but participate in a little bit of worship here. Um, this is um, from the Village of Church Worship, the Village Church of Church, Church Worship Lament. Uh, and so let's join in in a time of worship. God is so, so, so very faithful, so, so faithful. Um, even in the midst of, of, of absolute craziness, um, the Lord proves, proves to be faithful. And, and listen, man, I, I, for, again, for a lot of us, I know, 
Boy, we uh, when when you're in the when you're deep in the midst of something, uh, I, the, the prayers get much more. They get they get much sharper. <laughs> they they get uh, a lot. Uh, there's a lot more specificity and clarity with with your prayer. And I know last night, um, many of us who who live in this neighborhood, the uh, the prayers were were a lot more precise and. Um, crying out to the Lord for His faithfulness to um, to shine through, and 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 we believe by God's grace He He answered that that prayer. He is faithful. Well, if you are just joining us now, um, if you've come in before, uh, come in a little bit after we started, um, we are um, having a, just a service of 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 lament of of crying out to the Lord of expressing um, some of our our, our pain and anger and um, fear and um, disappointment, sadness, um, lament is again uh, it's, it's a and it's it's a a, a, a loud, vociferous, um, clear expression of grief, of sorrow, and um, and our hearts are 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 broken. We know that the Lord is faithful to bring us back together, but we also know that God. Um, invites us into that. He invites us to, to, to bring our complaint to him, to bring our sorrows to him, to bring our, our, our griefs to him. Because he actually, as the manufacturer of us, as the one who puts us together, knows how to bring healing to us. We don't know how to heal ourselves. We can't heal ourselves. We can't fix ourselves. If we could, we would have done it by now but we can't and so we bring those things to a faithful god a faithful lord who is able to move on our behalf who's able to restore who's able to bring hope and so that's that's what we're experiencing um, today i want to remind you that you can use the chat to connect with each other you can also send prayer requests if you have some specific prayer requests that are um, maybe more confidential you can send that straight to the chat moderator alone um, and those who are who are um, on our prayer team um, will confidentially pray with you and for you uh, if it's not a confidential prayer request and you just want to put it out there you can share that um, with everyone as well um, i know there's some praise reports as well i think that are out there we've had folks in our church community that have um, been diagnosed with COVID-19. Yes, we are still in the midst of a, of a health pandemic. And, um, and I know that we've had some recovery from some folks and there's some folks that are still battling. And so um, if you have prayers, praise reports about that or prayer requests, you can, you can send those in um, as well. Uh, make sure as well, if you are inviting people to share in our worship service, um, Please let them know that as they come in, if we don't have them already in our system, that we really want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to provide a safe space. And if we, we need to identify them and make sure that we know who they are. Um, so if you are inviting people, um, please feel free to do so. But let them know that when they come in um, to the waiting room, they will need to let us know who they are and how they got connected so we can keep this space um, sacred and safe. All right, I'm gonna turn now to the Psalter, the book of Psalms, and we're gonna look at Psalm 88. And this Psalm uh, is um, from, uh, there's Psalms that are written by a number of people. Uh, David obviously uh, had his hand on most of the Psalter, but there's a lot of other um, kings and uh, lay people and musicians that wrote the wrote different psalms as well, and this one is from the sons of Korah. Uh, for the music director at that time, you'll see that if you open your Bibles, you'll see that kind of as a header there. Um, but we'll read the psalm, and then afterwards, again, you'll have a chance to do a corporate response. And that response, we're going to encourage you again to to say it out loud. Um, to um, to allow your lungs, your vocal cords to express um, the word of the Lord out loud. You can do that all together with your family, but we will have everyone mute it. Uh, so we'll give you a chance to do that. So Psalm 88, 
here's what it says. Lord, you are the God who saves me. Day and night I cry out to you. May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. I am overwhelmed with troubles and my life draws near to death. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like one without strength. I am set apart with the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, who, rem who you remember no more, who are cut off from your care. You have put me in the lowest pit, in the darkest depths. Your wrath lies heavily on me. You have overwhelmed me with all your waves. You have taken from me my closest friends and have made me repulsive to them. I am confined and cannot escape. My eyes are dim with grief. I call to you, Lord, every day. I spread out my hands to you. Do you show your wonders to the dead? Do their spirits rise up and praise you? Is your love declared in the grave, your faithfulness in destruction? Are your wonders known in the place of darkness or your righteous deeds in the land of oblivion? But I cry to you for help, Lord. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Why, Lord? Do you reject me and hide your face from me? From my youth, I have suffered and been close to death. I have borne your terrors and in despair. Your wrath has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. All day long, they surround me like a flood. They have completely engulfed me. You have taken from me, friend and neighbor. Darkness is my closest friend. This is the real pain. The real pain that we experience. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it feels like, man, why do we have to keep doing this? Listen, beloved, I'm 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 confident that as we cry out to the Lord, there's a cleansing that happens and he hears that cry. And he brings comfort to us. He brings peace to us. He brings his reassurance to us. This is what I am confident of. Because he already knows. So we make this cry out to him. And so now, a chance for you together as a family or if you're by yourself together as a community virtually will share in this response. And again, our response, our congregational response will come from Psalm 62 verses five through seven. You'll be muted, but please read it aloud as you see it on the screen here. Amen. So now we're going to um, uh, show you um, something that I thought would be um, really special. It's a spoken word piece um, by a brother named uh, Michael Agnew. Um, and this is, this is uh, called uh, Lost for Words. And I thought it might be a, 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 just a kind of a powerful and appropriate um, thing for um, what we're uh, maybe experiencing and feeling right now. And so um, let's take a look at this and then we'll have a call and response together afterwards. Mm -hmm. 
listen uh in the midst of um in the midst of a lot of pain and 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 hurt and anger that's real um boy the confidence that we can have in the lord that we are not alone um i know uh i know it can feel like it i i've felt like it i've cried that that prayer that god it feels like you're not you're not here um and um and god always comes and reassures that that he is right there that he is he is right there uh and so listen we are um we're devastated by um, systems that allow senseless violence towards non-white individuals, especially our black and brown brothers and sisters um, at the hands of the police. We are devastated by that. We are angry. We are sad. And I can say without question that in the midst of all of that also is an unbelievable, um, indescribable current of hope that churns through. I was so very, very proud of the way our community responded each day and how people from Epiphany, from other churches and organizations came out and instantly began to clean up, instantly began to, to serve food. Uh, people were protecting businesses. Uh, people were, were, were engaging and praying with individuals. Uh, the, 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 the pain and destruction was not able to extinguish the love of God, to not able to extinguish the hope that people still were able to offer, even listen in the midst of, of craziness. And so, so I'm grateful to God for that. I'm grateful that he lets us know that we are not alone and grateful that we have his word and the body to, to lean on. Uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we want to do now is to have a time of call and response. And so there'll be a passage that comes up. And this is taken from Isaiah chapter 55, verses six through seven. And I'll read it. I'll read one portion and then you'll see in bold where you get to respond as a body together. And again, I want to encourage you to respond out loud. Um, you'll get a chance to do that. and We'll walk through, through, that, through that portion of scripture. And then um, we'll enter into a time of, of worship with our own uh, Cortland Pickens. And so let's respond together from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 and 7. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. Amen. And so we are going to um, begin to come to a close now. Um, I've got a few more things to share with you, but uh, in the, the, in the, in the, the thread of lament, um, listen, oftentimes lament doesn't end with an answer. Uh, many of us, we know, you know what it feels like to grieve and to have sorrow, to, to, to scream out in pain, and you don't immediately have an answer. You, you, you kind of walk away from that, and sometimes you just have to be for a minute. Um, and that's, that's okay. And there's times when lament leads us into uh, a release 
and there's some exuberation that can happen. Uh, and that is also okay. And so we want to now um, have a time where we can have some corporate release um, of praise and adoration because praise often, uh, as we praise the Lord, as we lift our voices to him, uh, that often breaks the chains of, of depression, breaks the chains of, of oppression um, that we might be faced with. And so we want to set this time up now um, to worship with uh, our very own Cortland Pickens, uh, who lead us in an extended time of worship. And so, uh, so Cortland, uh, my brother, uh, take it away. Hey family, thank you guys so much for joining us for another worship service. Um, our hearts are grieving this morning. Our community is grieving. The world is grieving. Um, my prayer is this morning that we can draw our minds in and worship together. Um, for the Bible says when two or three are gathered in his name, our Father will be there in the midst. And our prayer is that our Father can come and sup with us this morning. So if you would join me, let's draw our minds in. Here we go. Our God is greater. Our God is strong.
mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Can you pray with me? Heavenly Father, today is a difficult one, and we come to you as a broken and humble servant. The heaviness of this world weighs on us, and while we know you are in charge and you have our best interests at heart, we are struggling. We know we can turn our cares over to you like the scripture says in 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast your anxiety on you because you care for us. So this morning we pray for our community. We are in desperate need of your mercy and justice. We stand firm and believe that righteousness will prevail. So today we choose to trust in you, to focus on you and to leave behind our worry and cares as they are nothing in your light. When we find ourselves falling to our knees, let it be in front of you with your name on our lips. Dear God, you will ease our burdens. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys so much for worshiping with us this morning. I love you so much. Be peaceful, and I will see you next week. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Cortland. Uh, well, listen, um, hopefully uh, our, our, um, our emotions are, um, are churning in the right direction now, and um, hopefully you've been able to sing out um, and read the scriptures aloud, and, and, um, and that's bringing some, some level of catharsis for you as well. So uh, listen, uh, one of the things I want to let you know um, is we have a, a friend, a friend of mine, a friend of a lot of ours. Um, uh, her name is Michelle Bilby. Michelle is a licensed um, marriage and family therapist, and um, and she has offered her her services to um, to anyone who just feels like they you know they just need someone to to talk to um, to to process. Um, this stuff with especially if you have young ones who may need some some process and Michelle and I have done a lot of work together over the years and um, serving um, uh, a number of churches uh, here in the Twin Cities and we've served our denominational a denomination nationally together as well um, we've led workshops around um, uh, cultural competency and and um, and reconciliation, um, and she's a, a good friend. And so um, as a therapist, um, she, um, her heart is, is um, molded towards helping people to, um, to understand and process uh, different things. And so if you, if you feel like that's something that you might need, you can um, send a message privately to um, to the chat moderator, and then um, uh, we'll make sure to to pass your information on on to Michelle if that's something that you uh, that you need. Uh, also remember if you checked in any time, maybe later on during the service, uh, we love to make sure we know who all is here. So um, make sure um, you um, submit to uh, uh, submit to the to the chat room uh, who you are. Uh, you can list the names of all the adults and just the number of children that are with you. And again, that helps us to, to really get a good, a, good, um, a good look as to, uh, to be able to capture um, how many people we're able to, to, to partner with um, uh, virtually on Sundays. And so, uh, so if you would do that, that would be great. Uh, I also wanna just take a quick moment um, before we kind of conclude with some uh, ways that you can stay connected um, in the community. Um, I want to make sure that you have an opportunity to, to give. Um, remember that um, your, your giving, our giving, um, as we all give, uh, is an expression of, of worship. And, um, and listen, you, your gifts um, 
uh, I say this all the time to, to, uh, to folks um, about any aspect of giving, whether it's your time, uh, whether it's the finances that you've been entrusted with, um, our giving, um, the amount does not matter. It really, really doesn't. Uh, the amount does not matter. What matters is the intent and how you give. And so our prayer is that your giving would be joyful, that it would give you joy. If it doesn't give you joy, if you're not excited about it, um, then it, that's not a good gift. You don't want to give out of you know compulsion or somebody beating you over the head that you got to give. No, it, it ought to give you joy. Listen, it ought to be sacrificial our giving, again, of our time, of our, the finances, the, the sacrificial giving is what the Lord uh, really, really desires. And what does that mean, sacrificial giving? Well, it means that um, we give and it, and it costs us something a little bit, right? Um, it, might, it might cost us a, a want that we have. Uh, never will we ask you um, to give in place of your real needs. If you, you have real needs, um, to cover. You should cover those needs. Um, but we would say um, sacrifice a little bit of maybe it's something that you really want. Uh, and so your giving should be joyful. It should be sacrificial. And because we have a generous God, we want to be able to give generously. What we need you to know is that your giving um, goes to support the mission of this church. And that mission is to make and deepen disciples, to identify and develop servant leaders, and to plant healthy, multi-ethnic missional churches. And so you are not just giving to Epiphany, you are giving through us. Um, and we've been able to come alongside, especially during this time, um, to cover um, significant benevolence requests, even as a brand new church, um, to cover significant uh, benevolence requests for families in our church community, as well as in the community of our strategic connection with Hope Academy. Um, We've been able to meet a, a number of needs that way. And so just know that your giving is helping to support those, those efforts. Um, and so how can you give? Well, you can, you can text um, any amount to 84321. Um, that's as simple as that. Most of you um, are, a lot of you are doing, or doing text to give. And so um, if you haven't done that before, it's a simple process. You've probably done it through other means. But again, text any amount you want to give, the number, the quantity of the number, and you text that to 84321. If you haven't done that before and you do it, it'll take you through a little bit of a setup so, um, so your information will be captured. Uh, you can also go online um, to epiphanycov.org and go to the Give section. Uh, we're in the process of overhauling our, our website, um, uh, again, as a startup church, and so it's going through some overhaul, but you can still, it's still very secure. You can still give there. Uh, if you have the Church Center app, then you can use that as well. A lot of you have the Church Center app, um, so you can give directly through the Church Center app. Um, that's an option as well. Uh, and then if you um, uh, want, you can also mail in your um, your uh, checks. If you want to write out a check, you can make those checks out to Epiphany Covenant Church, and then you can mail them to 2300 Chicago Avenue, Minneapolis 55404. So those are the ways um, that you can give. And remember, um, uh, your gifts uh, help us to really come alongside people in need um, during this time. So I want to turn it over to our sister Julia, who um, will give us some instructions and announcements about how you can stay uh, connected. So Julia, take it away. Good morning, church. Um, I'm sorry for the echo. Um, that should solve that. I'm sorry about that. Um, sounds, like, sounds like you're just speaking. We from are, um, my name is Julia. Uh, my husband, Paul, and my three boys, we live in the neighborhood um, immediately surrounding a lot of the um, devastation in South Minneapolis. And so um, I know we're having a lot of people come to us and say, how can we help and where can we serve? And, um, you know, first things first, uh, several families in this neighborhood that attend Epiphany. Um, 
or in North Minneapolis or others, um, from what we know, everyone is doing well physically and doing okay. Um, and it's been exciting to see our church um, come together and um, support the needs around each of one of our communities. And so we wanna encourage you as a church body to continue to um, reach out to one another to find out um, if there's ways that you can serve. And for now, because it's such an organic um, need, uh, there's things that are happening all the time, things are changing. Um, we're gonna do our best to update you on, or post things on the Facebook page, the Public Epiphany Facebook page. So if you're not on that, I would suggest that you um, get on that public Facebook page. And then um, you might be able to change your settings so that you can see the notifications first or make sure that you're seeing it real time. But you'll probably need to also check in uh, frequently to see because sometimes things don't show up in the feed in real time. So um, in your own personal feed. So check in there. We'll try to post opportunities. Uh, today, people are reaching out to say, how can we come in and clean up? And um, you know, right now from what we've seen and what neighbors are chattering about is that cleanup is maybe not the first need today, um, but we'll keep you updated. I'm starting to see a lot of uh, things posted for donations, um, for diapers, for food, that kind of stuff. So we'll try to give you opportunities and ways to serve or ways to volunteer that come up as they do come up. And we'll try to also be mindful that there's uh, more than one part of the city that's um, you know, hurting and has needs. So we'll try to represent the different parts of the communities that have been impacted and, and show you ways to be a part of it. So stay tuned, look out for that. Um, and, you know, we'll update you as things evolve. All right. Thanks, Julia. Uh, sounded like you were on the mountaintop there for a minute. So uh, <laughs> your echo was, you maybe should have just kept doing it that way with the echo. So. Um, so listen, uh, we, um, we're going to just in our time now, but I, again, I would just want to, I want to thank you for, for, um, allowing yourselves to, to, to be in this space, um, to be in this, this place of, of, of worship. Uh, cause remember, uh, lament is also an act of worship as well. And so, um, uh, it's not, we're not going to act like it's been easy cause it hasn't been, it has been, it has been very hard, um, uh, living uh, in the in the epicenter, if you will, of 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 all of this um, uh, destruction that's really been going on. Uh, make no mistake about it. There have been beautiful protests, um, loud protests, and appropriate um, protests, and and we honor and recognize those things. Um, we a lot of us took part in those things, um, but what we cannot do is 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 give any any praise for destruction um that comes and so uh so so we're grateful that the lord has has worked and to protect us physically even though uh, many of us are um, emotionally uh and just spiritually drained um right now uh, so um be sure to connect with each other check in with each other see how folks are doing um, make sure you reach out and, um, and then as much as you are able, um, find, find ways to get involved and, and, um, and help out. Uh, remember, this is not just about, uh, Minneapolis, as we can see, um, stuff is happening around the world and, um, as safe as we might feel in some neighborhoods, um, uh, it can happen anywhere. Uh, so let's be mindful of that. Let's trust that the Lord uh, is greater. He is so much greater, and we believe that. All right, let's turn our hearts to the Lord in, in prayer. Father God, um, we, we come to you now in, in um, joy and also grief. Lord, we have wept this week. Our hearts have been heavy. We confess, God, that, that we're angry, we're confused. Our emotions, God, are all over the place and our answers are, are few. There's sadness, God. There's, there's grief. There's, there's anger. Our trust is, is shaken. We cry out to you, why, Lord? Why now? Why, 
God, would you allow this to happen? Why are these things so, so difficult? And even though, God, we, we claim your victory, we hold on to your victory, we hold on to the truth of your victory, we acknowledge that in the darkness we feel that it can be overwhelming, it can be terrifying. So we pray that you would help us, help us, God, to, to feel you, to, to, to claim you in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the nighttime like children, God, like our children that may have been crying, we cry out to you for relief from the dark. And it's hard, God, to focus on the small things these days when the big things loom so large in all of our pain. So we pray that you would have mercy on us. Keep us, God, from sin. Keep us from, uh, from sin in our anger. Keep our hearts and our minds connected to you. Lead us from prejudice, God, to truth. Deliver us, God, from hatred and revenge. Give us courage to overcome our fears and build bridges that we may stand before you, God, reconciled through your son, Jesus Christ, and reconciled to each other. Help us, God, to eliminate systems of oppression, eliminate systems of racism, eliminate systems of of, of depravity, God, help us to get rid of those things, to eradicate them and replace them with kingdom systems that honor you, that bring glory to your name, and that bring help and healing to your people. We love you, God. We praise you. And we know that you are a refuge in strength. Restore to us today, God, the joy of our salvation. Make us strong and new and ready and waiting for the continuing work of your spirit. We love you, God. We appreciate you. And we cry out to you now in the matchless name of your son, Jesus, who is the Christ. And we all said together, amen and amen. God bless you all. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing in this time together of lament and worship uh, with us. And so be change agents out there. Be safe. Uh, check in with each other uh, and, and engage in the community. Be the love that God wants us to be. All right. Blessings to you all. Take care.